So I was inspired to make this Thai chicken recipe after buying a package of Kevin's Thai chicken sauce here. This is a coconut sauce. And I thought, man, he's doing it healthy. I should be able to do it as well. I'm doing a recreation here and I think it turned out very delicious. And now you can make it at home nice and easy and make as much as you want because these little packets are kind of small and uh, you have to buy quite a few to serve up, in my opinion, you know, six people. I'm Rockin' Robin and I'm gonna show you how to do it right after my chef joke. It's time for chef joke number one. Okay, so this guy walks up to his friend and he says, hey, I just finally finished reading your book about basil. And the friend says, well, it's about time. And the guy says, no, it's about basil. So to start off our recipe, we are gonna take a half of a yellow onion and we're going to slice it up nice and fine. Uh, you wanna use the super fine dice here. I don't want the chunks of onion to be really big, but just very tiny. Next, we're gonna get some fresh ginger here. I've got about, oh, a couple inches worth, but we're gonna peel it and then I'm gonna cut off and grate about an inch worth so that I get about a, a teaspoon of fresh ginger. You can use the back of the spoon as I'm doing here, or you can use the knife to kind of trim it off or a combination of both, which seems to work pretty well. Once you've got about an inch of it exposed, then go ahead and take a microplane or a fine grater and just grate up until you get about a teaspoonful. Next up is some minced garlic. So I've got three large cloves here. Use four if you, if you have small ones. And we'll just cut off the end and then smash that garlic, just like you do the like button if you're enjoying the video, and then peel off the skin. Then slice up those cloves nice and thin and then just chop it up until it's very fine. Next up is our Thai red curry paste. Now this adds a lot of flavor to the dish. As you can see in the ingredients, there's a lot of good things here, lots of flavors. I'll leave a link for you in the description if you wanna order it online. So I'm gonna use about four tablespoons of this. This is not very spicy and very kid friendly, so, but it just adds a ton of flavor. Next up, we're using some full fat coconut milk and I like this brand because when you read the back of it, you can see that the only ingredients are coconut in this. So read your labels so you know what you're getting. We're also gonna be using some coconut cream. I happen to get this at Trader Joe's and I love the ingredients on this as well for the same reason as the other one. It's basically just coconut. Now with the coconut cream, we're only gonna be using a half a cup. So give it a stir to make sure everything's well combined. I wanna sneak a few veggies in here. So I'm gonna use a red bell pepper, chop it up nice and some zucchini. Now with the zucchini, cut off both ends and then cut the zucchini in half cut that in half again, and then cut that each piece into thirds. Then turn it on its side and give it a nice chop. And then place that in the same bowl with the bell pepper. Okay, now let's talk about chicken. I'm using organic chicken thighs here that are boneless skinless from Costco, but feel free to use whatever you want. Just keep in mind that chicken breasts uh, tend to dry out and they're a little bit more of a challenge to cook because of it. So here I'm trimming off some of the excess fat, and then I'm just gonna cut these into bite-sized pieces. You can cut them into strips if you want, as long as you cut them into smaller pieces so they'll cook up quickly. Now the last thing I wanna prep up before we start cooking is our thickener. I'm using arrowroot here, but you could use cornstarch. I've got a couple of tablespoons of water, cold water in my dish here, and I'm gonna add two tablespoons of arrowroot. Um, it's more than I'll probably need, but I like to have a little extra in case yeah, I need it. Okay, it must be time for chef joke number two. Here we go. A friend of mine asked me the other day, she said, would you like to try, would you like to have some of my coconut shampoo? And I thought about it for a bit and I said, well, I think I'll pass. I don't have any coconuts. Okay, we're ready to start cooking. You need a large frying pan over, uh, it's about medium heat. And we're gonna add some olive oil to the pan. And we're gonna add those finely diced onions and the ginger. We want to stir fry, cook this for about well, three, four minutes, maybe five. We just want the onions to get softened. Okay, it's been about three minutes. The onions have softened. Time to add the garlic. I turn the temperature down to low. We don't want to burn the garlic, so we just want it to get fragrant and that will we'll just stir this up for one minute. Now we're gonna add our curry paste. Next, we're gonna add some ground coriander. 
and we're going to add a couple teaspoons of that. We're going to work that paste into the heat a little bit. Do this for about one minute. Now we're going to add the coconut milk to this and the coconut cream, which is going to help thicken this up. I'm going to turn the temperature back to medium. Start giving this a stir. Next, we're going to add some fish sauce, and you can find this in just about any supermarket. So we're going to add just a couple teaspoons of this, not too much, and you can get the written recipe below the video. Now next, we're going to add some coconut sugar, and this is just going to add a little bit of sweetness to the dish. Start off with three tablespoons, and if you need more, you can always go another tablespoon, but start there and see what you think. Now we're just going to bring this up to a simmer for 10 minutes. Now it's time to add the arrowroot, and make sure you give it a stir before you actually add it so that you know that it's dissolved well. And when you add it, you want to add it slowly. You see I'm adding just a little bit at a time here and mixing it up because otherwise it'll clump up and it'll be kind of not good. So make sure you keep stirring with a whisk the whole time and you have this up to a simmer when you're doing it. And uh, just keep adding it until you get the thickness that you like. Okay, so this is looking really good to me and I like this thickness, so I'll stop here. It's time to add the chicken, so I'll just slide it right on in gently so it doesn't splash. And we're going to cook this for about five or six minutes. Make sure you submerge the chicken in the sauce. Turn up the heat a little bit so that it'll come to a boil and simmer a bit. And like I said, it's only cooking for five or six minutes. And I'm also going to place a lid on this to help it cook a little bit quicker. All right, it's been six minutes. Let's have a look at that chicken. Looks pretty darn good. Looks like it's cooking up nicely. Now we're going to add the veggies. And we're going to cook these for a couple, two, three minutes until they are just fork tender. Just getting a little soft. And we're also going to place that lid back on. It's been four minutes, so we're going to check those veggies. Give them a stir and then pierce them with a fork. They're done, so now we're going to taste our sauce and see if we need to make any adjustments. I am going to add just a little touch of salt. Now for a little brightness, we're going to zest one lime into the pot. Now take that lime and cut it in half and juice half of it into the pot. And taste the sauce and see if you want to add more lime juice, you certainly can. I grabbed some fresh basil out of my garden, so we're going to pull off quite a few petals here and then I'm going to chop it up and add it as a garnish, not really a garnish, but a flavoring right at the end. And don't be afraid to use plenty. And I'm serving this up with some brown rice. And I can't wait to give this a taste. I tell you, the curry paste, the fish sauce, the lime, the coconut, it really makes for layers of flavor here that is just really delicious. Now, if you're looking for a nice dessert to finish off our dinner, you gotta try my key lime pie with gluten-free crust. This thing is nice and tart and creamy and delicious. Click the link on the screen and it'll take you right to the recipe. Did you enjoy today's video? If you did, smash the like button for me, that always lets me know. And if you know someone who might enjoy this recipe, please share it with them. All right, we'll see you back here next week for another Rockin' Recipe. Take care.